Welcome back guys. In today's video, we are going to be sublimating on wood. Let's go ahead and get started. I had picked up a several um, just small wood plaques out of the Michaels like front. You know how they have like the discounted um, little like dollar spot in the front by the registers? Well, I was kind of just going through there and found some good little wood plaques that I felt would be perfect to practice sublimating on wood. When I got into sublimation, being able to sublimate on wood was one of the things I was most interested in. As you guys know on my channel, I do a lot of DIYs, a lot of thrift flips and things that involve wood. I do a lot of hand painting. I do a lot of stenciling. I use my Cricut a lot. And I just wanted to have one more option of ways to create beautiful signs and not always cause myself so much work. Sublimation seemed like a perfect thing and I wanted to find the most affordable way for me to be able to do this. There are a lot of different ways that you can sublimate on wood, but I'm gonna show you the way that I did it today with polycrylic. I wanted to try this on just bare wood, but also uh, wood that was painted white. I feel like the white is what is going to give a more true color and just show you guys the difference in between the two. So I'm taking some of the Rust-Oleum Heat. It's Rust-Oleum High Heat White Spray Paint. I actually wish I had this in um, like the brushable like a can that way I could brush it on and really control how much gets on there but I did not have that option I did have this so I wanted to go ahead and try this since I knew this would be safe to apply heat to with the heat press so I'm going to be using this and I'm also going to try using just plain acrylic paints I tried to do some research on whether or not it could take the heat or not and everything that I found was based on storage of the paint but not necessarily the paint as it was adhered to your project already so we're going to try both of those and i'll show you how those worked out to prep this you want to if you don't have a nice smooth surface go ahead and hit it with a light sanding and then if you don't plan on painting it you want to just give it um, two to three just healthy coats of the polycrylic making sure that each layer has plenty of time to dry in between. And by plenty of time, I mean, for me, that means I can touch on any part of that. It's not tacky, sticky or anything um, and with no problems. I will tell you this, this is my heat gun. A simple, cheap heat gun off Amazon. This is linked in my affiliate links. But this is what I use when I just need to help speed up the process a little bit. It has two different heat settings and it does save me a lot of time. So if you were literally waiting on paint to dry sometimes and life doesn't always call for that extra spare time get yourself a good heat gun and just hit it a few times and that will just help it cure and dry a little bit faster so that you can speed the process along so i painted mine i hit it with my heat gun i let it set for a couple minutes just to kind of let it you know kind of do its thing and then I went the opposite direction. So if I painted horizontal this time, the next time I'm painting vertically, that's going to ensure that I don't miss any spots and that everything has good coverage. I only did two coats on mine. I felt like it had really good coverage. Make sure you're kind of um, moving it around and you can see in the um, light kind of where you have spots and where you have missed them. Make sure you get completely to the edges and just give it a good overall coat. You want to give that plenty of time to cure as well. And then once it's done, you can just give it a very light sanding on top and you're ready to go. It's going to give it a nice smooth surface to make sure that everything um, sublimates over onto a smooth surface. I apologize. My words are escaping me. Anyway, so for the one that I didn't paint, I just did the polycrylic for the one I did paint. I used, again, the high heat spray paint. I just took it outside. And what I did notice is that it left, the wood was smooth, and then it kind of left like a rough edge to it, like a raised surface. So I did have to go back and kind of sand that down just, just slightly with my 120 um, grit and make that smooth again. Um, I did. I went ahead and did the polycrylic and then sanded it down, and it still seemed to be okay but I should have given it a little bit better of a sanding before applying my polycrylic because then I could have really smoothed it down and made sure that it was really good to go. Um, I have two of the little rectangles. I have one of the ovals. My designs that are here, I did on Canva. I 
mention it every time, Canva.com. I'm not sponsored. I don't have any type of affiliates with them. I just truly love their website and I use it for almost everything. I made my designs in there, uploaded them into Cricut and or Word, um, kind of whatever I had to do to get them printed out, printed out my designs, and then I was ready to sublimate. For this, I was doing th um, the temperature of 380 for 60 seconds. Make sure that you have your butcher paper ready. So tape, go ahead and get it all placed how you want it to. Um, tape it in place and make sure you put butcher paper on the bottom and the top that covers completely with a little extra room to catch any of those gases that are kind of escaping. And I just pressed it again for a minute. After that, I removed, like for the two cow pictures, I removed it right away and it seemed to work great. For the oval, I did the same exact thing, and for some reason, it just peeled off. Just peeled off. I don't know why, it just caused all kinds of chaos. So I decided to give it another try. I prepped it again um, for these ones. Again, I'm using that high heat spray. Sprayed it, let it cure, do its thing. Well, I say I let it cure. You're, some people say you need to wait a full day. For these, I did. I waited 24 hours. I had painted them the day before, sublimated um, the day. Well, I wanted to redo it and I'm running out of time. So I went ahead and just sprayed it, then gave it a little bit of time, did my polycrylic steps, just like I just said, and went ahead and sublimated it and it did it again. Now, mind you, in my brain in here, I was like, girl, you gotta let it, you gotta let it chill. I did not. I tried to peel that off while it was hot because um, I get mixed messages. I hear some people say, you have to let it cool off before you remove your sublimation paper on your projects. I have other people say if you leave it on while it's hot, it, there's a chance of ghosting. So I don't really know and there's a lot of mixed messages and as you know, I'm still learning too. So I'm trying to kind of figure out what works for me. So I decided to take a step back. I have another one of um, this like long piece of wood. I picked this one up just from the Dollar Tree and decided I was gonna try the acrylic paint and just see what happens. So I gave it a nice good layer and let that dry. I used my heat gun to just kind of speed the process along, let it sit for a little bit, did two coats of the polycrylic, a light sanding down, went ahead and created my design while I was letting it kind of sit and cure a little bit, taped it down just the same, slapped it on there, temperature of 380 for 60 seconds, brought it to my table, set it down, <laughs> and just let it cool. I did go ahead and stack some paint cans on either side because it was warping just a little bit, which should, you should expect that. Um, it, it just happens. It's wood. That's what's going to happen. But as it cools, it should help flatten it out a little bit and still be fine. So I did that, let it cool. There's still a slight bend, but then I was able to pull that paper off and had no issues with it at that point. So I believe for this, specifically for the wood and the paint, it'd be in your best interest to let it cool completely. And I just think that's it's worth more of the risk of possibly, I guess, dealing with ghosting rather than your entire piece just peeling apart. So that's just my suggestion or what I plan to do in the future. And I'm really actually happy with how this turned out, especially for my first try. I'm very excited about it. I do um, need to tell you that w you'll get some of that paper that just stays on there and I feel like that's happened to me with almost all of my sublimation except for fabric. Uh, all you have to do is get some cool water and then a clean rag and the rag I'm losing here, I know it looks very dirty, it's my DIY rag, it's been thrown in the washer many times, it's just stained. I promise it's clean so make sure you're using a clean rag. Just take that and then just... Um, as hard as you have to. I didn't go super hard, but I wasn't gentle by any means and just rubbed that paper that was left behind right off. It came right off with no problem. And I think they look pretty good for what they are. There is a little bit of ghosting on some of them, but that's also kind of could be user error because I am learning along with you guys. And I just want to show you here. This is my first side. Um, I had already sanded it down, so you can't really tell much. This was the second size. I think it would have been really cute if it turned out, but as you can see, there's just like some bubbling and um, just kind of like peeling away. So this is what happened when I did not let it cool. So you can just kind of see it's like literally peeling away the paint. 
I should have let it cool because well, I guess what was happening was heating that paint and this was the heat resistant paint mind you um it was heating that polycrylic in that paint and then I was trying to pull it off warm so it was still gooey and just kind of like peeling away with it whereas with this one I let it cool completely and then peeled it off and I did have to go back with a rag and kind of scrub it a little bit and it came off but I think the colors transferred really beautifully I use Printer's Jack ink and I also use a sub um, sublimation paper. They're both in my affiliate links, but so far I've loved the coloring and everything that comes through with those two products together. Um, I do want to say that I was trying to do some research on how to properly do this. I found a video that was very helpful. They did five different products. So there's like the Subby Glaze, which I didn't want to try. One for cost, two because you do have to put that in the oven after you paint it. That's another step I don't want to have to worry about. That's a no from me, so automatically I I took that out of the running. You can do a heated laminate or a, I don't know what exactly the word is, but basically it's a laminate that is allowed to be heated. And what you do is you'll place it on the face of your wood. You'll put, you know, press the laminate to it and it'll stick to that. And then you can sublimate onto the laminate. That leaves a really high gloss and so does the, um, the like HTV that you can sublimate on. So does they did they did um I don't know they did a couple different options and all of them had just a really high gloss. And for me, if you're not if you're new to my channel, you don't know this, but if you've been here a while, you know that all of my sealants and things are all matte. I don't like a heavy shine on it. I want it to look how I did it. So I try to use just a matte on everything, whether it be my polycrylic, my Mod Podge, my um any of my other sealants or you know top coats that I use, they're all matte based. That's a personal preference. And the the other options that these people had shown for their wood, they were all heavy gloss and that just wasn't the style I wanted. I wanted that organic kind of, you can tell this is wood. I want you to know that it's wood. And with the heavy gloss, it's like, well, what is that? Um, and I wanted you to be able to see it from every angle. You know, even with my ring light here, you know, it doesn't gloss out or kind of glass over to where you can't see it. So again, these are personal preferences, but I wanted to share that with you. I believe it's called Just DIY or Let's Just DIY. I'm not sure, but I will link their video in my description because they do a very awesome thorough job of going through all of those different options that maybe would work better for you. Again, I'm just using this polycrylic here. It's water-based, it's meant for wood, it's clear matte. This is my, my go-to for almost every project that I have. So it's just my personal preference. I wanted to show you what I had. I will show you here. This is the this is the natural wood where I didn't paint it. You can tell here there's some ghosting right here down the middle. But overall, it still looks pretty good. And because it's a really light natural wood, the colors came through pretty well. But then there's this one, which the colors are more true to what I designed it to be. And other than this little chip right here, it turned out really great. The only slight ghosting I have is right over the word live, but it's so light that you can barely tell. But then when you hold them up side by side, I mean, granted, there is that ghosting over the cow, but like, just look at their floral crowns, you know, look at the color difference on painting it white before sublimating so the natural versus that I feel like the colors just came through a lot better um, and again with this one this has white underneath it and I feel like the colors on here just pop really well and then I s screwed this one up whatever so yeah that's uh kind of the process that I went through I feel like that 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 heat time and temperature worked great for me Again, my personal preference now is going to be to step back, let it cool off, and then just use some cool water to um, kind of scrub off that paper. Then it's good to go. So that works well for me. I'm very excited to be able to move forward and practice more with this, especially doing it with items I already have without having to go buy heat laminate sheets or subby glaze or like HTV or any of that kind of stuff. Um, I always have paints always have paints around and I'm really really excited to get to 
try more with the sublimation and really learn and learn with you guys. So if you guys are learning too and want to share your projects with me, I do have a Facebook group that you can join and share pictures of your project, share ideas, um, just bounce ideas off of other people. It's new, so we're still trying to grow and learn together but feel free to join it. That's linked down in the description. If this was helpful to you in any way, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate any feedback that you guys might have for me. So if you can let me know in the comments below if this was helpful, if you enjoyed it, if you have any suggestions for me on how to do better in the future, I love to hear all of it. You guys are absolutely wonderful. If you're new here, consider subscribing to me. If you're have been with me for a while, you know that I love you very much. You guys are the absolute best. I'm gonna take you in for a closer look and I'll see you next time.